Welcome to another video where we're profiling amazing entrepreneurs from around the world. And again, I'm uh, very pleased and very proud to be joined by CEO of Australian Capital Investment Group, Mr. Sean Morgan. Sean, welcome. And how are you going? Great, thanks, Paul. Great to be with you again, and great to have a chance to uh, to speak with you on uh, topics close to our heart. Well, let's get straight into it. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, increased commodity trade and on based on decreasing the Australian dollar. Is that correct? One hundred percent correct. I think uh, with We've covered a, a gambit of, of different uh, market uh, topics, and I think the, the key one now is obviously the decrease in the Australian dollar and how that affects uh, different businesses in Australia and how they can capitalise and, and increase their revenues based on the decreased trade in Australian dollars. What's your message to people about this? Because I know you, uh, I know you have a, a very very strong opinion about where where, where the dollar should be. Well, definitely. Look, uh, I think the Australian dollar is pricing itself now very relative to to the market and international demand. Uh, you know, the Australian dollar being priced at par or parity to the US dollar was was not so attractive um, for a export-based country, which, you know, Australia can be claimed that it is a self-sustaining country, so it doesn't rely a lot on uh, exports. However, there are a uh, robust community in Australia that do require exports, and, and that's how they maintain their lifestyle and their, and their uh, business um, living, such as the agricultural industry. And I think that while a lot of companies cashed in uh, while there was a high Australian dollar and sold out farms and sold out primary industry, um, I think now is, it's more attractive to, to hold on to those primary assets and actually sell off the commodities that are linked to them, whether that's agricultural products, beef, you know, cattle industry, wheat, um, or into the mineral sector. Uh, and so instead of actually selling what we say selling the farm, uh, hold the farm and sell the product. So, and I think now it's much more attractive. Australia can be much more price competitive uh, in the market uh, now that the Australian dollar is sitting around the low 80s. Yeah, I mean, I remember when I first came back to Australia a year, many years ago, and the dollar was something around about um, 60 something cents. Um, and it was brilliant coming back from, from overseas. And, you know, these days it's, it's, a, lot, uh, it's a lot less attractive for, for foreigners to come into the country because of the Australian dollar. Well, one hundred percent correct. I think that you know Australia also relies a lot on tourism. So you know it was actually expensive for a lot of us, you know, foreign tourists to come into Australia um, and enjoy the lifestyle and and what Australia has to offer that that sometimes Australians take for granted. Uh, and on top of that, um, it was great for Australians going overseas on holidays because it became a lot more um, price receptive. However, just coming out of the financial crisis, people were very tentative. They were unsure about spending habits and spending patterns. Um, how we're, we're seeing a, a renewed confidence across all spectrums of the market. So people now are, are feeling more confident to put something on a credit card, to actually uh, take a loan or, or spend money that they've been saving for the last two, three, four years. Uh, now with the Australian dollar decreasing, uh, the price holiday might be a little more expensive, which actually translates well for the domestic Australian market because now instead of going on holiday to the United States or, or Europe or uh, a holiday destination, Fiji, uh, one of the islands, now you're going to spend that money locally here in Australia uh, on one of the Queensland beaches, Western Australian beaches or, or close to home because it's the uh, same sort of value of holiday but you get more value for your money um, because there's no exchange risk. So. Uh, I, I think that it's actually going to translate across the board to a stronger domestic economy uh, because there is becoming, or there is a lot of liquidity in the market, hence why we've got low interest rates. But now people are feeling more confident in spending that money where two, three years ago, three, four years ago, nobody was spending any money. So strategically, what's your, what's your message for Australian businesses right now, uh, given, given, where this, you know, given where you see the dollar, as in, not just where, you, where the dollar is, but where you see the dollar going? What's your message for strategic for Australian business right now? Sell, sell, and sell. But not your company and not your primary assets. Sell, sell, sell your products. Put your hands up and say to the world, what is it that um, you'd like to buy? Because Australia has some of the best industry and manufacturing qualities in the world. Uh, they rank alongside Germany, uh, of US, uh, probably superior to US in, in some terms of manufacturing uh, and different industries. So uh, my message would be the same to Australian businesses as it would be to uh, state governments who now seem to be wanting to privatise assets and sell them off to pay down debt. Uh, my message to Australian businesses is don't sell your business because once it's sold, it's sold. You can't get it back. So sell your products 
sell your your services because there is a demand. Uh, Australia ranks very high in quality. That little uh, green symbol with the uh, Australia made, 100% Australian made, uh, is worth money. And people will pay for it. They will pay for quality. Uh, while there is uh, an abundance of products coming out of China and Vietnam and India and Sri Lanka and uh, these type Bangladesh, these types of places, and, and while they fill or fill a, a niche in the market, people will always pay for quality. And that's where Australia should be pricing themselves, quality. Uh, and now if I get into, say, the, the commodity industry and, and uh, specific the mineral industry where Australia is very, very uh, uh, richly uh, fortunate where they have a number of minerals uh, deposits uh, in the energy sector and as well as uh, precious metals, uh, my, my message to the uh, junior miners where they've gone through an absolute crunch, a credit crunch, there's no liquidity for them, banks are walking away from them, investors have shied away from being... Uh, hurt uh, through the financial crisis is start packaging up your minerals. Uh, there are a number of products, as I've touched on in, in previous uh, interviews with you, Paul, where the ASX have a number of products available to companies and uh, potentially they're just not aware of them. Uh, one of them I wanted to touch on was commodity credit link notes. These are CCLNs. These are very, very actively traded on the Toronto Exchange, actively traded throughout Europe on different secondary exchanges uh, and of course very tr commonly traded in the US uh, where you're simply taking the mineral you have in the grounds, um, proven mineral whether it's uh, with the Jork report and I'm not talking reserves because once you have a reserve of a, of a commodity then it's very simple to get financing but I'm saying resource so it might be in the ground but it might not be price attractive to extract that mineral from the ground so what a very common financing tool is is you link that mineral, that proven resource, to a note. And for example, it might be 10 tons of zinc. And you link that to a note at a set value at today's zinc price. The investor then buys that note with the comparable zinc value attached to it. And then the repayment could be over five years, seven years, or 10 years, but it's linked directly to the zinc in the ground. And as that zinc is mined, uh, uh, um, the exploration of it, as it is extracted from the ground, then that note is repaid. The investor gets the increase between today's zinc price and the zinc price when it comes out of the ground. So there is a uh, somewhat of a risk for the investor that the zinc or coal or magnesium or any one of the minerals could lose value. However, the note in its principal form, if it's, for example, $100,000, that won't ever lose value. So the mining company or the energy and resources company still has to pay 100 cents on the dollar or 100% back to the investor. Where there is the attractiveness is in the price of the commodity. So, uh, and these notes, they are traded on what's called the aqua range on the ASX. Uh, again, not very commonly known. It's the structured product platform. And there is, again, a number of trade desks, institutional investors, investors worldwide that are very knowledgeable in the commodities market, uh, track prices, track different minerals and, and how they're moving, and will actively, actively buy notes linked to uh, uh, the mining industry. Run briefly that bias one more time, not, not the whole story, but what are they? They are commodity linked. Commodity credit linked notes. So commodity, you're linking it by, by simple as it says in this words, you're linking a commodity to a note, which is a credit note for the company. So uh, again, it's called a CCLN. There's a uh, plethora of information in the World Wide Web about uh, uh, credit linked notes or commodity linked notes. Um, again, not, not actively traded in the Australian market because Australia is a very equity heavy market as we've touched on before. Um, but as there's such liquidity in the market and as I've touched on uh, on the debt uh, capital product side, uh, I strongly am advocating and our firm is advocating uh, commodity credit link notes for the entire mining, mineral and energy sector. That just seems to make a heck of a lot of sense because anybody who needs to have uh, funding right now for their mine, uh, they have a jork or some other you know, official report which says, yes, we have, we have this in the ground. They don't have the funding. They can leverage funding right now and the investor gets the upside of the back end based on there being an upside in that resource, obviously. Um, you know, and and as technology evolves, the cotton wall so that that, that uh, resource might not be uh, cost effective to mine right now, it may be a lot more cost effective in the future to mine. 
one hundred percent correct, Paul. You've understood it perfectly. And and case in point, there are transactions where with gold, where you know you might have to uh, do diamond drilling to extract the gold, which is cost prohibitive right now. But as you said, as technology increases, where we were forty years ago to where we are now, or where we were ten years ago to where we are now, uh, what what once was cost prohibitive becomes cost affordable. And you can extract that mineral, and the investor will get the upside. That's his risk reward factor. Um, but for the investor, if if the mine is prepared to pay, uh, you know, a standard uh, RBA bank bill rate or LIBOR rate or prime rate on the money, um, the, the difference between the investor leaving the money sitting in their local bank uh, or leaving the money with a miner who is securing it with those minerals, it's much more attractive for the investor because they're getting the same rate of return. But there is a potential upside um, when the actual mineral is extracted from the ground. Uh, we're going to come back to that a number of times, I believe, if, if, if we may. Away from the next videos that we do, uh, let me just recommend go to the uh, Australian Capital Investment Group website, uh, which is uh, auscapitalgroup.com. Correct, or auscap.com, A U S C A P.com. And, and um, there's some information there. And, and of course, contact us at our office and any one of the uh, debt capital markets team would, would love to speak to people. And, and as I said, if, if not with our firm doing transactions, give information because the more transactions in the market, the more attention is being drawn to it and uh, the, the better it is for everybody. Awesome. Sean, thank you so much again for your time. I really appreciate it. I know you have to fly uh, quite literally. Um, and I look forward to being able to talk to you again soon at your convenience. Thanks so much again. Thanks, Paul. Always great speaking to you.